Today we're going to cover the essential step of how to add USB ports to your PC when you inevitably run out of USB slots. This is a channel primarily dedicated to sim racing and for all of those know with all those extra peripherals you will quickly run out at some point. Now ultimately you can do this with a USB hub but I've run into multiple problems with things disconnecting and they're not very reliable so I thought I'd put in this. So this is the four point USB hub from StarTech. Now it's very easy to get lost with all this because there are so many on the market, but there were a couple of essentials that I needed. I needed it to be powered, I wanted it to be 3.0, and I needed to make sure that each USB input had its own separate bus. What that means in simple terms is each USB terminal has its own dedicated channel. I've currently got this fitted at the moment. It's working perfectly, I'm pretty impressed with it. It's got five gigabytes dedicated per channel. You can power it with either SATA or LP4 power. And if you fancy picking up the same one, I will leave an affiliate link in the description below to this product. I think it's priced currently at £98. Here we can see an example of the SATA and the LP4 terminal, also called the Molex terminal, I believe. Now, my interpretation of this is that SATA is very much the updated power supply because it consists of 15 electrical pins, whereby the LP4 or Molex only has four. So if you've got the option for SATA supply, I would personally go for this. This is an example of my SATA cable with the SATA input. This is the bit that's going to plug directly into the back of the USB device. And you've got to make sure that it is compatible with your power supply. So do some research. We've got a Corsair power supply, which we'll see in just a sec, and I'll show you how this all fits in. Now, when you connect your SATA terminal to your SATA cable, you'll notice that there is only one way it fits in. So just orientate yourself because once this is in the PC, it's going to be very difficult to kind of have a look at it because it'll be well within the hardware. As you'll see, with a little bit of a gentle push, it's just clip in and it sits completely flush against the input terminal. And we'll just take this off ready for implantation into the PC. Here we are just taking off the cover of the PC. You're going to have to get to the front and the back, and you're going to have to identify a free PCIe slot. Here we've got the four lane channel smack bang in the middle there, which will fit this just nicely. You only need a four lane one, but again, if you do have a higher lane free, you can also put it into that, as you can see I've done with the Bluetooth thing just beneath. We're going to have to get the back off, because ultimately we're going to have to do some power management, and first of all, we're going to have to get our power supply out. So just a quick little drill here to get things off. And then with some gentle persuasion, we will manipulate out our RM1000X Corsair power supply because we need to identify a free SATA power terminal at the back to input our new swanky cable straight into. Please forgive the camera angle because you should just see here the SATA terminal at the back and if you, with a gentle little push, it should just clip in and click and then you're ready to go. It's just a better example of what it looks like seated. And then what you're going to want to do is gently push all of that back and try and push the cables back in as neatly as possible. Now you're going to have a fresh bit of cable here, which you're going to have to feed through nice and neatly. Here it is fed through from the front. So this is our SATA power cable. And you want to make sure that it doesn't hit anything, and it's free from obstruction, and just try and make it look as good as possible. Now, what I strongly recommend doing is, A, you've got to remove this before you start, because you're going to need a free channel to slot the card into and then make sure you firmly plug in the SATA power cable before you implant the card. Because if you don't, it's gonna be really tricky to get your hand in there, particularly if you've got a tight PC case with lots of other stuff. As you can see, we've got the graphics card just sat above, and we can also make sure that's nice and snug so there's no issues with the connection. It's just a close-up of what it looks like connected. No, it sits completely flush. Again, you do have the option for Molex power supply if you wish, but I would advise going SATA. Here we are just pushing it into the new track, into the free slot, and you will hear a bit of a discernible click once it's successfully placed in. Once you're happy with its position, you're happy with the position of the cable as well, go ahead and tighten it back up and secure the card in place. What I would note at this point is when you turn on your PC for the first time after this, all the drivers for the USB card should auto install automatically. If however you are for some reason running an old operating system, I believe pre-Windows 8 or Windows 8 itself, the included CD-ROM will allow you to install the drivers manually. Here's just a sexy panning shot looking at everything in situ and notice the cable is nicely rooted towards the back. Just make sure it doesn't hit anything, particularly the graphics card above. If you need to do some cable management with some cable ties around the back, please do that. Once everything's all nice and sorted, reattach the power supply, reattach the back case, reattach the front case, job done, mission complete. And there we have it, you've now got four brand new powered USB ports installed to the back of your PC. If you found this useful, please like, subscribe, and I will see you all, hopefully, very, very soon. Bye for now.